Hello, welcome to the channel. My name's Caveman Aston, and today I'm going to be finishing off the showing you guys how I fitted this and the glass digital readout scales to my milling machine. Let's get on with it. So first up, I'm going to show you how I've mounted the screen. But first of all, I'm just going to go over this bit here. This bit used to house a bit of an aluminium uh, square section that came down and then had a plastic shield that would wrap around the milling head. Uh, so when it was making cuts, it was supposed to stop any swarf and stuff being kicked out. Kept on getting in the way, uh, and I'd have to lift it up above the work that was being milled be able to actually move the material underneath the cutter. So I've ended up taking the bar out and just locking this in the position that it closes the switch inside so that it thinks it's in the safety position that allows the machine to turn on. I have taken these two bolts out thinking oh, I'll just remove this only to remember that there's still some wires attached inside. So at some point in the future I'll probably take this off, uh, modify the circuit so that it's fixed so it's always going to work and then just put a plate over to stop any swarf and dust getting into the hole that's left. Onto the screen itself, um, as you probably would have seen in the first video I've done, there was three different aluminium brackets that came with the kit. I don't know what they're all supposed to be used for specifically, but I've repurposed these. Um, I'll cut to a little bit of video of me milling these slots longer and drilling a couple of extra holes, but basically what I've done is I've got one aluminium bracket on one side and the other on the other side so with this top edge, so they're both right angle brackets, this top edge comes over the top bottom edge goes over the bottom and I've got a four bolts in, one above this arm and another one on this side above the arm and then I've got one here that goes below the arm another on the other side that goes below the arm and as you tighten each one up in turn it allows an even clamping pressure across this arm here. So that's what holds the screen in place so I can sort of lift and push down and it's it's really solid. So I've used the extra long bolts to go through and then I don't know how well you can see but this bracket, uh, this sort of square bracket that holds the arm here with the pivot, there is a tapped hole here and here and then the same on the other side I've just got short stubby bolts that come through sort of from this side coming into here. That's what holds the screen onto the bracket itself and then that's how the whole bracket is fit. Alright so here we are up close and personal with the bracket side on. So here is the actual arm, this is the vertical bit that goes into the control box. You can see up the top you've got one long bolt that then comes out on the far side. The bolt on the lower section here and here and you might just be able to make out the head of the bolt that holds the arm onto this aluminium bracket in the first place. So hopefully that all makes sense and obviously how all the bolts uh, line up to be able to clamp on this bracket evenly. The reason I wanted it to mount, be mounted on this side, obviously I've already got the control box here so it's kind of logical in some respects, the fact that I might set something up, start it, stop it, change some of the settings or re-zero it. Um, the other reason is of course on this side is where I've actually got the, the handle for this, along with the uh, wheel to be able to drop the and raise the height of the column. Um, it would have kind of been a bit more symmetrical had it been on this side, but I think it would have got uh, been quite interference-y. Um, one other reason is I tried to do a 45 degree cut, so I tilted the head 45 degrees. Admittedly at the time, I tilted this side down, uh, which seemed like a great idea because I still had easy access to this without this interfering with the cut. Um, part of the problem was eventually this actually started hitting the work. Uh, so I thought if I'm going to put a screen the other side, I'll have the same problem 
no matter which way I do it. Whereas if I, thought, if I add the screen on this side, I can tilt 45 degrees away from, and then I can just unscrew each handle if I need to get a, a full range of movement. So what I'm doing here is I've already measured out the existing distance of the bit of rubber that covers the ways on the back of the milling machine. I've then added a length that will definitely cover the extra distance that then uh, will cover the glass scale to the side which means that the entire back section of the scale will always be covered by the bit of rubber. Uh, then just cutting it with a standing knife I'm using the bit of aluminium that comes with the kit because it's it's straight and it's going to get cut off if it does get scratched anyway as part of the mod that I need to do later. Then what I'm doing is I'm just going to lay it over the top of the strip that I've cut off because the strip is too long but it's wide enough. Um, and then I'm just going to lay it out, give me a bit of extra headroom on the top and bottom because I've got such extra length. That means that if the bolt holes do start to rip there is extra space and clearance for them. Um, so here I've just got it lined up as far to the right hand side as I can, which means all of the extra bits to the left is all spare, which means that's going to cover the scale, uh, keep it covered while it's in use. So I'm just going to push it down, lay it flat, mark the holes, I'm going to drill them out because I find if you just pierce the hole you have a massive amount of trouble getting the bolts through afterwards. So here we are at the lower side of the mill where I've got the scale that does the front to back movement. Um, I've not changed anything at the back however during the process of uh, sort of attaching this bracket trying to work out how I'm going to protect it from swarf I have realised that this bracket would have been a lot better had I have made it slightly smaller and put it on the inside edge so on this side of the uh, sliding section of the scale it is really difficult and it is a very tight squeeze um, but obviously the upfront sort of time investment probably would have been offset by just this being a little bit more usable could have then pushed this just a fraction further back there's not a lot in it because this scale is pretty much just the right size um, what it would allow me to do this bracket could have been slightly longer and then the overhang off the top when this scale is eventually attached it would have lined up just right uh, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use a little bit of a rubber strip that just dangles from the top down onto this and it will just flop over the front when the table is right at the very front uh, so nothing at the back has changed the only thing I've done is I've taken a little short section here so between there and there of aluminium bracket the slide doesn't actually make it this far forward and that is the very closest I could get it. I, I filed it down manually by hand um, until it, the scale stops just or almost just touching it uh, when the table is as far forward as it can physically come. That will protect the scale from the majority of swarf because the table isn't normally that far back. Um, and then like I said the bit of rubber will just protect any extra if it does go further back under special conditions and the bracket itself is actually only attached in one place because it's not going to be under any moving load or anything it's going to just sit there forever I just use the original hole that goes through the slide into the back of this where it's tapped and that just clamps it in position I've left it nice and long just because it should help stop quite as much swarf building up in this gap here for the eagle-eyed viewers that I have got, you'll notice that this plate is definitely different. Originally it was just about this wide, just about covered these two holes. Um, and what happened is that when the scale is on, the uh, section that mounts on these two holes here, the uh, braided cable, like on this one, overhung and uh, stops you getting access to this hole here. So what I've done is I've just offset it backwards a bit. Uh, which means that the cable's got enough flex to clear this hole because this hole here and this hole here are used for tightening the table so you can't move it or it doesn't move when you're uh, under sort of heavy load. I've spent a lot of time aligning these holes so they are considerably more accurate however you might be able to tell there is an ever so slight taper on the bottom but not nearly as bad as the first one. Then up on these top edges because it's a longer bit of material um, I've had to use some big washers to cover this gap uh, to hold the glass scale away from the table otherwise it would obviously rub on this and it would be misaligned because the part of the scale is attached to this, the other half's on the table you need to make up that difference so I've just put some washers on 
this slot here and another slot almost identical just not quite as long on here is just to make clearance for those washers when the table is at the very extreme ends. One of the other things that I've done is on the back surface along here and so probably just about there is I have milled just about half a mil off the back edge just so it doesn't touch on the table when it's moving because it was occasionally just feeling a little bit more grippy than without this plate attached at all so obviously as these were getting tightened it was putting a bit of uh, friction onto the table and here I just drilled clearance holes to be able to have the tapped uh, hot the taps tighteners go into these two holes. Um, they are going to have to be remade with some new material, I think. I'll explain that when I get the scale on with everything, it will make more sense. Um, otherwise, this plate is very much the same. Like I said, I've got the two tapped holes just to fit the scale on there. So I'll get that fitted and I'll show you what it's like with everything on. Okay, so here it is installed. I've got the scale sits underneath here uh, with the M6 bolts at the two ends there and there, which hopefully you saw as I was installing it. They go through to the bits in the back. The top sections were oval holes, I've uh, about 5mm. I've drilled those out to the tapping size for an M8 bolt, tapped it so the M8 bolt sits just in there and sits just above the uh, nut that goes in the other direction. That holds the plate on. The plate did have a, uh, a lip on it along the top here. I've just gone across, milled most of that off, and then filed it as flat as I could get because the setup in the mill wasn't the best. The glass scale down the bottom, I have actually drilled out. That was uh, threads in there. I've drilled those out so that the bolts go straight through into the bracket at the back. The reason that uh, this is sat, well it is in fact just at the same height as a table if not fractionally lower, which does work out really well, obviously the bolts do sit slightly proud, but not, they're only at the ends. Part of the reason is I had, when I was mounting all of this up, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the screw holes in here and under here that are for tightening the cross slide. Um, I'll try and put those in, hopefully I have in fact cut this high enough, um, but basically the whole glass scale was actually going to block those if this was mounted a little bit lower so everything has had to be lifted up to make account for that like I said this has been offset to make room, uh, room up in this corner to allow that last one to go in and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a bit of rubber onto this front edge here that just dangles down uh, so that as the table moves back it will just cover the uh, part of the slide that isn't covered by the aluminium bracket so here we've got the screen itself uh, some of you might be wondering why I chose to go for this rather than the cheaper 7 segment displays and the entire reason other than having a slightly nicer display here is the button here uh, or it's all of the buttons here uh, are special feature type buttons so this one which is the bolt hole or bolt circle feature it allows you to put in a radius of a circle the number of holes that you want on that radius and what it then does is it, as you cycle through each hole, it gives you the X and Y values for you to move the table to, which allows you to really easily and precisely uh, do bolt holes without having to do extra things. It's not that the seven segment screens don't do this, it's just the fact that it doesn't give you the graphical representation and you end up in menu systems that are just slightly harder to navigate. Because I don't do this very often, I wanted to make it as easy as I possibly could. So here if we just say I want a radius of 20mm, we'll just leave the angles at zero, which I assume is the start and stop position. Um, and then if we say six holes, hopefully you can see that. You've got little yellow dots here, 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 here and here. So that's obviously six holes around the circle. Uh, you have got a direction option, but we'll just leave it as is. If we hit enter, oh, oh sorry, if we hit start, it then takes you to the next screen. That one is in fact highlighted red and it's then telling you it's going to move in this direction with the arrow. So if we were to move the X and Y values, so 
move the table to there, we could then drill the hole, if we then go, oh where's the next button, here, that moves the red dot there, which then obviously means we can now move, move the table into the position for the next hole and drill it, and obviously you can see how easy that is, um, because it tells you exactly which hole it is graphically, the other uh, menu systems in the seven segment, not quite as easy to see. Uh, so that's my entire reason for going for this screen. Um, all the other features you'll see between both types of screen. You've got all the different features, so you can change it from, I think, free access to two access. You can put it on uh, a lathe mode. Uh, you've got absolute and incremental uh, menu systems, so you can go from each. You can reset everything. And like I said, all of the features here you can get on the other menus. And one other nifty feature is the calculator. So, go 20. Is there an addition? No, oh, here. So, plus one. There we go. Which is quite handy. I think you can then do the... Yeah, so here you can do the calculator to the position. So you can do some maths and set one of your values to that position. Or you can take one of those positions and input that to the calculator to say just half the x value. So if you're trying to find the middle point, you can uh, zero it once, move it to the other end, uh, zero it, not zero it, find the position using a, an edge finder. You can then just whack that in the calculator and half it, although there is a half function there, so you might use it for a slightly more complicated feature. So, other than actually fitting the bit of rubber to this little bit here, which will only be a minute, and I have actually got around to doing it. Single bit of rubber, drill just a hole through to the aluminium bracket underneath. It extends quite a way underneath, and as the table comes forward, it just kind of compresses up. So I might have to make sure it's clean before it gets compressed, just to make sure the swarf doesn't fall onto the scale. But otherwise, all good. I am going to be putting on the vertical column, just not in this video. The X and Y is the important bit. I have got a digital scale built into here, not as accurate as I'd like, uh, so I am going to fit it, but that's going to be for a future video. Part of the reason I've uh, really wanted to do this video is that I've not had to drill any new holes into this machine. I've fitted everything uh, using the existing holes, um, and any extra stuff I've obviously put holes in, so all the brackets I put holes in, um, because I was determined to prove a point, I suppose. Uh, so if anybody's got this exact mill, I'm happy to help them out. I have to come up with ideas of anybody who's struggling uh, with other ones. But there's always a way. I think the important part, if you're going to be taking on a project like this, is look at every hole and even entertain the stupid ideas. Uh, because quite often you'll find that the stupid idea won't be the solution, but it will give you an idea later on that is the solution. It'll make sense when you do it, you do stupid ideas and that just gets your mind thinking and the ball rolling and you'll end up with some really good ideas. So this, although not perfect, has done exactly what I wanted. Everything fits, everything seems to be level. Um, obviously you've seen all the scales work as I move the table and I've not had to drill any new holes anywhere, which was my, my biggest worry. Uh, so I'm really pleased I managed to do it. So if you've enjoyed it or found it helpful, please do give me a, a good old thumbs up. If you're enjoying my content generally, please do consider subscribing. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.